Hi, on this tape we're going to cover Shoshu Tenki Ko basic exercises, or I should say warm-up exercises, and then Shoshu Tenki Ko itself. Uh, Shoshu Tenki Ko is a very important type of Okinawan internal exercise. Um, during Shoshu Tenki Ko, what the focus is, is we're going to leave the key up the governor vessel, or Tokumiyakuke as it's called. Um, Tokumiyakuke, the first point in Tokumiyakuke is that right at the base of the Seiko, or I should say, uh, very, very bottom of the tailbone. So we're going to lead the key up Tokomiyakuke and around here, which is the end of Tokomiyakuke, or the governor vessel. And then I'm going to lead the key down Nimiyakuke, or the conception vessel. And the conception vessel goes to what's called the perineum, or uh, it's a point located directly between the genitals and the anus. And uh, from now on, we'll just call it conception vessel one or CV one. Um, so anyways, that's the idea behind this exercise. Tokumiyakuke and Ninyakuke are the two most important meridians in the entire body. They're on the center line of the body and Tokumiyakuke is the, is the governor of all of the yo energy of the entire body or all of the yang energy of the entire body. It governs all six of the yo meridians. Uh, Ninyakuke is the conception vessel, and it governs all six yin or yin meridians. It governs all of the negative energy of the body. So all six negative uh, bilateral meridians are controlled by nin miyakuke. So when I'm working with toko miyakuke and nin miyakuke, I'm actually positively benefiting all 12 bilateral meridians. And this is, of course, very good thing to do because it leads to strengthening of the internal organs which correspond to each of these, uh, I'm sorry, each of the 12 bilateral meridians. So we're actually positively benefiting 12 organs or functions within the body. At the same time, we're building a key in the two primary meridians which is going to help us lead to the next exercise which is Daishiten, a big cycle. So. This is very fundamental in itself because it's an extremely beneficial exercise for health and for the martial arts. You'll notice your martial arts will improve almost immediately after you've completed the cycle. And your ability to, say, take punishment, blows, whatever, um, your bruises will dissipate faster. When you get sick, you'll recover quickly. Um, you won't get sick as often. Uh, you won't injure nearly as easily. And when you do injure, your injuries will dissipate much faster once you've done this type of Kiko work. Um, this type of Kiko work is often, for many people, they won't need to do anything more than the Shoshiten. They just begin the Shoshiten, and they'll already be able to take very substantial blows if that's part of the martial element of Kiko that you're interested in. Um, taking blows is a very small, small part of Kiko, but it's a real great way to, uh, to demonstrate how it strengthens the body. And you can see a 120-pound woman take a full-power elbow to the throat or a full power strike to the kidneys, you can understand, you know, that somebody 5'10 can do this, you can understand that it's very, very good for strengthening the body. So if they can take full power blows, you know it darn well that a cold isn't going to do anything. So it's a very good exercise for strengthening the body and improving the health, not just martial arts, but it is also excellent for martial arts. Um, you'll notice an increase in speed and power, reaction time, um, everything about your martial art will improve somewhat from this exercise, and some things will improve greatly. Anyways, the first thing we need to do is some back stretches. Um, anything which stretches and increases the suppleness of the spine is going to remove blocks from tokumiyakuke. And that's the primary thing that we have to work with when we do the small cycle, or the shoshiten kiko, is work with blocks on tokumiyakuke. If the tokumiyakuke is flowing smoothly, you can virtually guarantee that ninmiyakuke won't pose a problem. It's usually tokumiyakuke that gives us problems. So what we're going to do is work on limbering tokumiyakuke as a warm-up, which will save us a lot of trouble in the long run. So the first thing we're going to do is just a simple neck stretch. We're going to inhale and then exhale as I move sideways. Now we're going to do the same next stretch, 
on a vertical plane. Now we're going to do a diagonal stretch of the neck. Um, perhaps 10 repetitions of each would be fine. Now we'll do a simple twisting exercise. And the idea of this is that we're going to allow the body to completely relax and just momentum to carry us back and forth. You'll notice my arms will be very relaxed, my back and shoulders will be very relaxed. Okay, so that's again an exercise that increases the, the suppleness of the shoulders and the spine. Again, we'll do another, one last spine exercise, or stretch, I should say. Um, we'll again coordinate with breath. Okay, I was doing those a little quickly. You should probably do them a little slower. And I was making my breath audible. You should probably do it a little quieter. Um, you should always do these exercises in a very relaxed fashion. I'm doing them a little bit quickly and a little bit loudly so that you can A, hear it, and then B, that we don't spend a lot of time on them. In, in any case, uh, those are the basic stretching exercises for the Shoshi Thank You Pro. Now, I'll explain a little bit about how we're going to do this. As she inhales, she's going to picture the key going down the conception vessel, all the way down, past the perineum, all the way to governor number one. So on this, this cycle, she goes all the way to governor one, or in some cases, depending on the style of Okinawan Karate, it's also possible to go to governor four. My personal opinion is that it doesn't make a lot of difference. I've tried both methods, they both seem to work well. So I think it's simply a stylistic difference and what the personal preference is, is fine with me. So anyways, we're gonna use Governor 1 for the, uh, for the video, but Governor 4 is fine. She inhales, circle around, and she exhales, she comes up, Slowly now. And that's the method one. Method two is virtually identical. Um, an important point that I've neglected to mention, which is very negligent of me, is uh, that you need to have the tongue, the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth during all of these exercises without fail. Every single one of these exercises that we've covered, right down from the point rubbing all the way through the point-to-point uh, -point method, and now the continuous cycle, you need to have the tongue on the roof the mouth. The reason for that is the tongue is going to act as a connection or a switch 
between Tokumiyaku Cave and Ninmiyaku Cave, between the governor vessel and the conception vessel. And this is absolutely critical. Without the tongue being connected, there's no direct connection and there's no direct route for the key to pass through. It's a very essential uh, thing to do. And when you think about it, that's actually one of the fundamental things that most people are taught karate, especially the taught mokso or serio uh, ndo, which is just meditation. Um, what, you, what you're taught to do is touch the roof of your mouth with your tongue, and this is the reason for it. Also in karate, you're taught to keep the back straight, which again relates to the shoshiten kiko. Um, there's no other reason in the world to keep the tongue on the roof of your mouth and keep your back straight. It's purely related to energetics. Um, in fact, a good deal of the art of karate revolves around the energetics associated with the shoshiten kiko and indirectly with the daishiten kiko. I mean, they're both daishiten kiko has the same characteristics because it's based on shoshiten kiko. In any event, um, you need to have the tongue on the roof of your mouth. Now, the second method. Um, this is going to be the cutoff line right below the nose before we're using the nose. Now, the second method has a cutoff line right below the nose and a second cutoff line at governor four. So, she starts. Governor four, now she has sail. To the low, instead of the nose, right below the chin, or right, right here. Now she inhales. All the way to Governor 4. Pass the tongue. Inhale. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the characteristics of standing Shoshiten Kiko are a back that's straight, perhaps the chin will be slightly pulled back, the hips will be tilted slightly forward, especially when you exhale, the, the hips will move, will, your pelvis will tilt forward, you'll have a pelvic rotation this way. And, and uh, other characteristics include, of course, the tongue being uh, touched to the roof of the mouth. Um, an interesting one that you'll see very often in kata, in martial arts kata, in which you do shoshiten kiko, you'll often see a knee bent posture with the toes in. This is very characteristic of kata in which shoshiten kiko is stressed. For instance, we're doing now naihachi dach, and you can notice in the classical naihachi dach of Okinawan styles, the pelvis will most likely be rotated forward, especially on exhalation when you're doing certain techniques. The same goes true for sign shin dachi. In Sanchin Dachi, you can see that the knees again are bent, the toes are in, and the pelvis will tilt forward or rotate forward on the exhalation phase. Um, now, we'll explain a little bit about the reasons for all of these. Barb will come out, please. Okay. The first thing we have to consider is the path of Toku Miyaku Kei. Okay, Tokumiyakuke has to be relatively straight. In order to get Tokumiyakuke relatively straight, you can see, because we're, because we're human, we have these nice little S curves in our spine. And that's great for suspension. We really need that in order to walk around every day and not have spine problems. But for Soshi Tenki Ko, we need the straightest path possible. If the path is straight, the key moves more easily. So the way we're going to do that, please go Sanchin Dachi, please. Okay, I told you about that. Okay, see now she's still got her S-curve. Now she's going to uh, tilt her pelvis forward, and you can see that actually eliminates this curve. It makes this very straight. It takes away the lumbar curve. Okay, now she lets her head forward like you normally would stand. Again, now you see this is a very sharp curve. And she does a correct Sanchin Dachi. Right? And again, now this curve has been lessened all of a sudden. So now we've straightened Toku Miyakuke, which is excellent. We really are going to benefit in our Soshiten Kiko. Can you back just a hair? Good. In our Soshiten Kiko, if the Toku Miyakuke path is relatively straight. Okay, other characteristics. Again, when you do Sanchin Kata, when you do Sanchin Kata, 
And when you do Naihachi Kata, it's classical to have the tongue on the roof of the mouth. Again, this is for the Shoshitan connection between Tokumiyakuke and Ninmiyakuke. It's very important. You'll also have, uh, when she inhales, your abdomen will slightly fall. Go ahead. And this is going to help lead the key to that area. Now, she's also going to let her pelvis tilt backwards. So, what that's going to do is the abdomen blowing out guides the key to the abdomen. The pelvis tilting back guides the key around the around the pelvis. We're actually going to combine physical movement with the movement of the key. They're going to move in a very similar path, a very similar way, and that's actually going to help guide the key. So now what we're going to do is we're going to visualize the key moving with the body motion. So as she inhales now, this moves out and then the pelvis tilts back. Now as she exhales, the pelvis will tilt forward and she'll pull her anus up and her urogenital diaphragm up and she'll tilt this forward which will lead the key upwards up Tokumiyakuke. So, she go ahead and do it one more time. So, she's lifting her anus, tilting this forward and exhaling all at the same time. And that's really going to help lead the key up. Okay? In classical Okinawan, thank you very much. In classical Okinawan arts, it's believed that uh, lifting the anus or the urogenital diaphragm or both will actually help lift the key up, will force the key up. So when she pulls the anus up and she tilts her hips forward and keeps the back straight and exhales all at the same time, we're forcing or guiding, I should say, we don't use any force, we never use force in Kiko, but we're actually guiding the key upwards. The lifting of the anus helps guide an upward motion, it creates an upward motion for the key guides forward. Same thing with the pelvis tilting forward. You can think of it almost as a pump. You're actually pumping or forcing, I shouldn't say forcing, that's again the bad word, we're guiding the key upward. And then again, the neck being straight helps it smoke flow smoothly. The tongue makes the connection. And again, now as she inhales, the abdomen going out guides the key, guides it very nicely to the tanden. It's slight, very, very slight uh, rotation of the pelvis backwards creates a guide for the key to move back around this way either to Governor 1 or Governor 4. So, Sanchin Kata and Naihanchi Kata both have all of those characteristics and both of those Kata help to guide the key along Shoshu Ten very easily. Guided along the Governor Vessel and the Conception Vessel in a smooth cycle. So both of those kata were actually designed to make this type of a kiko practice very easy. When the, when the kata framers created the stances associated with the kata and the hip motions associated with the kata, the fact that they stress the tongue needs to be on the roof of the mouth and the breath has to be coordinated with the movement, they were actually designing the kata to be worked with Shoshu Ten. So, Everybody, virtually everybody that does karate is doing already the fundamentals that they need for this type of kiko. Um, their kata are designed to allow them to do this type of kiko very efficiently. So now Barb is going to do uh, Sanchin kata. You'll notice that this version of Sanchin that she's doing is going to be the Miyagi version, but she's going to be doing two things that actually uh, harken back to Higona sensei. Uh, what Hig Higona did was he had open hands, and according to some sources, he either used less tension or used no tension. So, although she's doing the Miyagi version, she's actually doing the Miyagi version with characteristics that are, go back to the older Sanchin. Okay, now Barb will be doing Miyagi Sanchin, and as she's doing it, she'll be practicing the Shoshiten Kiko. Please notice the motion of her pelvis as she does the kata, as well as the motion of her abdomen. There will be a very, very slight distension and retraction of the, of the abdomen, as well as a very, very slight rotation of the pelvis. And this will be coordinated with the breathing and the visualization of key through the uh, Shoshiten Kiko. Please go ahead. <laughs> 